Let's look at how to connect our network to uh, Cloud Connexa. As you can see, I'm logged into the admin user interface of our Cloud Connexa. The very first step, I need to expand networks and then choose networks again and the menu bar. Then we're presented with three scenarios. As you can see, remote access, side to side, and secure internet access. You can choose all or as many as you need, depending on your environment and what you're trying to accomplish. So for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to choose a remote access and click on continue. This is where we're going to define our network. We need to give a name to our network. I'm just going to call it RNET. And then a description, if you need to add descriptions, you can add it here as optional. Now we're talking about connector. Connector is an unattended device that basically provides a constant connections and you can create multiple uh, connectors uh, for redundancy and high availability. So we're going to give a name to our connector and then we need to choose a region that closest to our connector. So Los Angeles is my region. I'm going to choose that. Then we're going to click on next. Now in this uh, screen, we need to deploy our connector. As you can see, our connector is here. The region shows. If you click on the drop down, we are presented with number of options such as uh, public cloud providers, AWS Azure, and so on, operating system, Linux, Windows servers, virtual private servers, uh, such as digital oceans, and compatible routers, uh, such as Teltonica, PFSense, and so on. Uh, we're going to look at AWS in this video. So once uh, you choose any of these options, you will be presented with instructions how to deploy your connector in that uh, on that uh, solutions for example if i choose ubuntu you can see the commands that or scripts that i need to run if i choose azure or aws you can see i have a launch button that i can uh, select and install it automatically so again as i mentioned a minute ago we're going to use aws for the purpose of this video so the first step here, we need to choose our region. I'm on a US West, so I'm going to select that here. And now the uh, launch button is available. So if I click on launch, uh, it's going to launch the connector on AWS automatically. I can also download the script for cloud formation, but I'm going to click on the launch. Now you can see I'm, I'm landed on a quick create stack page of our AWS. So here, uh, this is a template. We need to um, complete the information based on our AWS environments, uh, our policies and uh, uh, requirements. So we need to give a name to this stack. We need to choose the instance name. Uh, also select our VPC and subnet and so on. So I highly recommend you go through these steps and configure and enter information again based on your AWS environment and your requirements. I'm going to fast forward through this part and come back when it's done. OK, I'm done. I'm going to click on, um, I acknowledge that AWS configuration might create an IAM policy for me, and then click on Create Stack. Again, this part is going to take a few minutes. As you can see, the stack creation is in process. So uh, I'm going to fast forward through this part again and come back when this is completed. Our stack. Uh, Formation is completed. Our EC2 is created. Let's go to EC2 dashboard and let me select the instances here. And if I scroll down, here we go. We can see our a net connector is up and running. So let's head back to our Cloud Connect admin user interface. So the third step here is the security groups. If you click on that link, it's going to open up another page that is going to give you an instruction how to uh, modify your security groups for uh, or even check your security groups for your VPC routes. So I'm going to click on next. I'm going to bypass that. Uh, we got the green light. Everything is connected. Everything is good. So let's go ahead and click on next again. This is the part that we're going to uh, add applications. So basically adding applications here uh, give the ability for the users to connect to any app or any resources that you have on your network uh, by just typing an address instead of knowing the IP addresses or going through different steps. So uh, in order to add an application, all we need to do is just click on Add Application button here. 
And then we give a name to our application. I have a time card app on our network, yeah, so I'm just going to type time card. Um, and then uh, for the uh, protocols or application type, if you click on uh, custom, you can choose a custom ones or you can choose all. For uh, my time card app, I can choose HTTP and HTTPS and click on submit. Now for the domain, I need to type the domain name. So it is a timecard.ovnlab. Uh, dot local. So this is basically how uh, users can access the time card. As you can see, the time card is added here. If I need to add other applications, I can just click on add application. But again, for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to leave it as one. And then when we're ready, we're going to click on next. The next screen is uh, where we can add our routes or IP services if we need to do so. So for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to add any routes or IP services. I'm just going to click on next here. And then uh, one of the last steps is configuring access groups. As you can see, by default, the full mesh access group is in play right now. Basically, everybody has access to every resources on the network. We can create access groups here if we need to uh, and modify this one, or um, we can do that later on. Uh, if we want to change the access group from full mesh, we need to change our topology. I'm going to click on finish and we're done. As you can see, our connector is online and our application is shared and we don't have any IP services and the connector is on, uh, again, shows online again. One last step we need to do for the time card, we need to add a DNS record here. So in order to do so, uh, from the menu bar, we'll need to expand settings and go to DNS. Now we can add our own DNS servers to Cloud Connect. So if we need to, uh, by just clicking on advanced configuration and configure this, but uh, you can do your uh, DNS records here on Cloud Connect also. So I'm going to click on add DNS records and uh, type the name, the domain name, which is timecard.ovnlab.local, and then the private IP address of my uh, resource, my app here. And then I don't have IPv6 here. And then I click on add DNS record. That's all we need to do for uh, sharing applications. So if I had other applications, I would do the same thing. So at any time, if we need to add any uh, more connectors, we can go to networks, like connectors, and then add connectors to our network. If we need to add applications, we can do the same thing. Go to applications, click on add applications, and for IP services and IP routes as well. So this was a quick video on how to connect your network to Cloud Connexa. Thank you very much.